my life living and being born in Asia versus unconventionally moving to the other side of the world were all but a smooth run for me. I was born in Singapore and I lived there for about eight years. My whole entire life was set in Singapore. I had amazing friends and I was participating in a bunch of school activities that really made me happy. And so when I first received the news that we'd be moving from Singapore, I felt like everything I had control of was being taken away from me. California, it was the name of the place. It was where Los Angeles was located, where famous movies like The Avengers would be set. California was a place that everyone has heard of, but never would I have thought that moving to a place with fancy celebrities would be what I was destined for. And so when I first moved to America, walking out of the airport, I had already many, many negative connotations about the area that I just visited. I was already disgusted at the small pollutions, cars honking, babies screaming in and out, and the telecom noise. And I wanted to get out of there as soon as I could and go back to my house in Singapore. As an eight-year-old, the chaos terrified me. I wanted to leave as soon as possible. Moving into an apartment, it wasn't as bad as I thought. I got my own room, which I was super pumped about, but because of the jet lag, I drowsily slept through the first few days. And just like that, summer was gone. Now, this was something I completely dreaded. In no way I wanted to go to a school with a bunch of kids that I did not familiarize myself with. In no way was I being surrounded by a bunch of kids I knew I wouldn't be comfortable with. On my first day, I was dead afraid, but I tried to put on a smile and listen to my parents and force myself to believe that everything would be okay. But unfortunately, my worst nightmare came true. Throughout the whole day on my first day, I felt as though I was a complete outcast. All the kids in my school were white, only about one or two of color. And kids looked at me everywhere I walked. Something that really stuck to me was how they were looking at me. They looked at me as if I was a piece of, a piece of chewed gum under their feet. And the way that they were eyeing me terrified me. And I was embarrassed throughout my whole time there. I had glass at the time and my hair wasn't a tight ponytail, but many kids were wearing the total opposite clothes as me. They were wearing edgy clothing, had no glasses and had their hair down. And that made me feel really, really out of place. I felt scared and lonely and I felt like no one wanted to associate with me. And it was definitely the worst feeling ever. Now, because I lived in Singapore for quite a while, I had a Singaporean accent. So the American way of speaking sounded very foreign and it was very hard for me to understand what they were saying. And so it was very hard for me to converse with people, especially the people who I wanted to talk to. And I remember going to and from school, crying and locking my door so my parents wouldn't wake me up from school. And I continuously went in and out of school with a hot-headed temper all those days. But just on the first day, though, I had enough and I wanted to move back. Unfortunately, my parents thought otherwise. They wanted my first day experience to be a sort of learning lesson, something that I would gain tremendous value from. You know that infamous line that parents say, oh, you will know what I'm saying is right once you get older. But I never really understood at that age. I genuinely thought that they did not give a single crap about my feelings or concerns about America. And don't get me wrong, I tried blending in. I wore those bright, itchy shirts the edgy shirts that said, be the best version of yourself. Spending 30 minutes choosing an entire outfit to help me blend in and assimilate with my environment is something I never thought about even think about doing, especially as a third grader. But I wanted to try so hard to make sure that everyone liked me and that I fit into their expectations and that no one would look at me differently than their other friends. Now, in Singapore, I would just throw on my uniform, my shirt, and my pants without a single thought. In California, I started overthinking every single decision I'd make and how I'd get perceived from others. And so to fit that, to fit that I would start joining clubs, getting involved solely for the flat to blend in like the others, even if what I was doing didn't make me fully happy. I didn't quite enjoy how I spent my free time continuously, and I felt like I changed everything about myself. And I pretended to be this version that I never wanted to become, that didn't even relate to the true me. I wanted so badly not to fit into the stereotype of a brown, foreign, new girl. So I differed from my ethnicity as much as possible. 
I copied the kids, the way my kid, the kids at my school talk, walk, dress, and behave. And this heavily impacted my relationship with my family and my siblings. Every time I'd arrive home from school, instead of saying my usual hellos and highs as I do in Singapore, I would just walk right past them with a hot-headed temper and straight to my room. I wouldn't even eat at the dinner table. Instead, I left my family and went into my room. Doors locked. I decided to disassociate myself from them as much as possible and to continue to do what I was doing, which was assimilating to an environment that I didn't feel comfortable around. And so I continuously had to go to a place where I felt like I didn't belong every single day of my life, despite changing my whole personality to conform to society. And I wasn't able to share all this with my parents as this was just something so new to me and I didn't know what to do with this. And so this was a roller coaster journey of self-awareness. I realized that the first step of solving a challenge or a bad habit or an issue in your life is to first be aware of it and to take this tiny signal seriously. For me, I realized that I wasn't doing something right and was distancing myself with my family when my brother stopped asking me to come out, come out of my room to go to the park, which is something that he used to do very often in Singapore. And it's, I realized that it's always important to stick with your family and to have people to talk to when you're feeling sad or angry or mad to just let those feelings out in a healthy manner. And so I realized that everybody has problems and conflicts, not only me. It was way too late in this situation when I realized I had to be open and talk about everything that's running across my mind. And I realized when I did that, all the weight off my shoulders just came off. And I slowly learned to prevent these shortcomings and live a more happier and satisfactory life. I learned that opening up my emotions to my family about how I felt about school, for instance, made me feel better about myself. And I realized that it's very important to create healthy coping mechanisms. Since change can be extremely stressful at times, it is crucial to take care and keep in check of your mental and emotional health. And some strategies like talking to your parents, your friends, meditating, even exercising can help you calm yourself and be more self-aware of your behavior and your surroundings. And there's always a way to bounce back from change because the only thing that is constant in life is change. If you think about it, our lives would be so dull and concealing without change. Let's think about a game, right? If we were playing a game with levels, we wouldn't want it to be so easy. That would be boring. But if we had games that were challenging, we would push ourselves to complete those levels. And so that's the same. Now make that same concept about life. There's good change and there's so-called bad change. I believe bad change isn't as talked about and widespread as it should be rather than good change. Now, what I mean by bad change, I'm talking about change that's unexpected or change that you're not fully happy with, not what you want, not what the outcome you wanted was. But this is the change that we have to put actually our effort into where we're challenged in order to turn that bad change into a good change. We have to adapt to our circumstances consist consistently or else we'll lose, lose ourselves and fall behind, just like I did. And so we all have to adapt to change and the sooner the better. And, the, and I realized that talking to my family and speaking about my emotions helped me and helped my family give me some resolutions. And the same thing goes for any other change that you're experiencing. And many of us have different coping mechanisms to adapt to change. And we have to make sure that those coping mechanisms are healthy and we are consistently striving to make that so-called bad change into a good change. And it's always important that I realize to be open-minded and take advantages of the positive sides in any sort of change you're experiencing, big or small. Thank you.